cute child born between my beloved husband and me, but my mother-in-law can't help but blurt out that my son is not cute. To think she can say such a thing about her own grandchild? And to make matters worse, she treats me, her daughter-in-law, as an intruder. Well, if that's the way she feels, then I can do the same. This is the story of the most selfish and awful mother-in-law, and the tale of the daughter-in-law who stands up to her. My name is Maya. When I was 28 years old, I got married to my husband, Andrew. A year ago, our long-awaited son, Liam, was born. Around the time our son turned six months old, I also returned to work. I was juggling work and entrusted our child to daycare. Some people might think that it's too early for such things. However, we had a certain situation. My husband's workplace wasn't doing well, and since we got married, his salary gradually decreased. To be honest, I'm currently earning twice as much as he is. We also have a newborn child, and we know that we'll need even more money in the future. With that in mind, I decided to return to work sooner. I never had any complaints about going back to work because I didn't dislike my job in the first place. However, there was someone who didn't approve of my return to work. That person was my husband's mother. My mother-in-law moved in with us three months ago, but it seems like she has issues with me. She not only criticized my parenting, but also finds fault with my everyday actions. Putting such young children in daycare? You're unfit as a mother. It's been a tradition for women to stay home and take care of the household, hasn't it? Come on, what era are we living in? She endlessly lectures me with such old-fashioned beliefs. As soon as I come home from work with my son, You're working until this late again. Don't you think Liam deserves better? She immediately started shouting. On my days off, I spend the whole day with Liam. He's doing just fine at daycare and we have a stable routine there, so it's okay, you know. If I try to argue back, she raises her eyebrows sharply. Are you really going to unquestioningly believe what complete strangers like daycare workers say? If that's the case, your child won't grow up properly, you know. My mother-in-law, who doesn't usually take care of her son, still feels entitled to give parenting advice as if she's an expert. And on top of that, she doesn't hesitate to criticize my personality. Living with a daughter-in-law who only cares about her job. Honestly, I regret it too. Why did Andrew marry someone like her? I feel like I'm going crazy with stress every day. At that moment, even I, who is usually patient, couldn't help but get irritated. Well, if it bothers you that much, would you like us to stop living together? You do understand why we ended up living together, don't you, mother-in-law? Yes, there is a reason why my mother-in-law started living with us. Originally, my mother-in-law and father-in-law lived together in their own family home. Then one day, my father-in-law had a traffic accident and became paralyzed from the waist down. Furthermore, it was discovered that he had advanced dementia, and my mother-in-law couldn't handle it anymore. She had to place my father-in-law in a care facility. Afterwards, she asked us to come back and live together here. She pressed us to move back in together, but both my husband and I had jobs to attend to. Considering the commuting situation, we couldn't just move from our current home. Then one day, my mother-in-law suddenly brought her belongings to our house without asking, and ended up staying. Ultimately, this cohabitation wasn't by mutual consent. It's essentially an inconvenient living arrangement where my mother-in-law moved in on her own accord. I understand that it's tough, considering that you're parents-in-law. That's why we agreed to live together. But didn't we promise not to interfere with each other from the beginning? Oh, did we? I can't even remember something from that long ago. Even though I emphasize the promise, it's clear that my mother-in-law feels completely empowered and knows she won't be kicked out. Her attitude was getting on my nerves. Please, stop this already. We agreed not to interfere, didn't we? We accepted living together with you, right? This isn't how it was supposed to be. You're so noisy. I wonder why Maya isn't as sweet as Luna? Luna is such a well-behaved child. Luna is my husband's younger brother's wife. In my case, she's like a sister-in-law by marriage. Well, she also has a rather unpleasant personality. Or maybe it's better to say she's sly rather than having a bad personality. She became a full-time homemaker shortly after marrying my brother-in-law, and she was very much liked by my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law would unilaterally 
summon Luna to this house, and the two of them would gossip about me. Hey Luna, listen to this. Maya, you know. She's still continuing to work. Oh, really? Even though Liam is still so little? It's impressive that she can manage that. See, see? Right? In that regard, you're doing well by being a stay-at-home wife. You can rest assured even if you have children someday. I deeply respect you, Mom, so I'll do my best. This continuous parade of trying to please each other goes on relentlessly. What's more, they deliberately speak loudly within my earshot. I genuinely disliked the way those two acted. Eventually, Luna, perhaps wanting to be liked by my mother-in-law, started speaking ill of me on her own. Your husband, if I recall correctly, earns us about as much as my husband, right? Yet despite that, the fact that you both work means your budgeting skills are lacking, aren't they? Certainly, a few years ago, their salaries might have been similar, but now my husband's is even less. I hadn't told them about my husband's company struggling, partly due to pride. When Luna criticized me, my mother-in-law enthusiastically joined in and it had become a regular routine. Really? I can't imagine leaving the kids to someone else to take care of when it's my fault for being so bad at making ends meet. Luna, you shouldn't be this kind of wife, okay? Of course, it's because I have super respect for your mother. <laughs> I can't help it. Oh, Luna. They should have their excessive flattery contest somewhere else, as it was making me feel embarrassed just listening to it. It only added to my stress. I felt like I had reached my limit living with my mother-in-law, so I decided to talk to my husband about it. Hey, it's about your mom. Almost every day she invites Luna over and makes fun of me. Huh? Mom does that? Since I usually get home earlier than my husband, he wasn't aware of me being mistreated. As expected, he had a puzzled expression. Exactly. She promised not to interfere, but she criticizes me for continuing to work. She hangs out with Luna and endlessly badmouths me. I can't take it anymore. After thinking for a while, my husband says something unbelievable. Well, Maya, Luna seems to get along fine with Mom, right? So maybe, Maya, you could try to compromise with Mom a bit? Huh? Hey, were you even listening to me? Mom even denies my personality. How can I compromise with someone like that? When I pressed him on it, my husband scratched his head indifferently. Don't be so uptight. Just try to be like Luna for once. Then Mom will probably like you more. What's that supposed to mean? Pretending to be all sweet to win your mother over? Enough already, I was a fool to seek advice. I felt like there was no one on my side right now and frustration welled up inside me, more than anger. The next day, the snide remarks from my mother-in-law and sister-in-law continued, as usual. When I started preparing dinner after returning home, I heard a voice like this. Are you planning to make another terrible dinner tonight? You're always cutting corners and it's really annoying. Well, it's probably because of your job, isn't it? Your mother-in-law and I would never serve our husbands half-hearted meals like this, you know? In my opinion, neither my mother-in-law's cooking nor Luna's deserves any compliments. My mother-in-law's food is overly seasoned and not that tasty, and even for my sister-in-law, who practically lives with us every day, you'd think her domestic skills would be apparent. While muttering complaints in my heart, I silently continued preparing dinner. When my husband returned home, both my mother-in-law and Luna blatantly changed their attitudes, and neither of them harassed me. Because of this, my husband couldn't trust what I said. Just then, an incident occurred. While I was at work, I received a sudden call from the daycare. After learning the details, I quickly contacted my husband and rushed home. There, I found my mother-in-law and my sobbing son. Hold on, Mom. What exactly are you trying to do? Taking Liam away from daycare without permission? When I yelled, my mother-in-law sighed in exasperation and looked at me with a condescending expression as if mocking me. What are you talking about? I did it for the sake of my grandchild. Daycare is just a waste of money. Child rearing is something a mother should do, isn't it? That's your own selfish belief, isn't it? Even though there are circumstances and I left my child in your care without permission, taking them away without consent is just plain rude. It's practically kidnapping. Huh? Kidnapping? It's my grandchild for heaven's sake. Whether it's a grandchild or not doesn't matter. You ignored the daycare 
teacher's objections and took them away on your own, which is no different from kidnapping. At this point, my mother-in-law just shrugged her shoulders. Eventually, she began saying something outrageous. Ha! Huh. Nonsense. Neither you nor the grandchild are cute at all. If you have complaints, just leave already. For me, it's one thing, but my grandchild? Not being cute? At that moment, a loud warning bell rang inside me. To think my own grandchild isn't cute, and to say it so casually in front of the grandchild. Living together with someone like this any longer is impossible. I will absolutely not forgive her for belittling my precious son. I absolutely must protect this child. At that moment, my husband returned home and I immediately told him, Andrew, it was your mother who took Liam from daycare. I've reached my limit, Andrew. I can't live with your mother. Then my mother-in-law suddenly started pretending to cry and playing the victim. Listen, Andrew, can you believe Maya treats me like a kidnapper? I was just going to pick up adorable Liam. Don't you think this is terrible? Just picking him up? My mother-in-law's words got me heated up as well. Don't joke around. Earlier you said our child isn't cute, right? Telling me to leave quickly? You can leave. This is our home. Do you plan to act like a good mother only in front of my husband? Andrew, please help me. Maya always harasses me like this. Seeing my mother-in-law crying and pleading with my husband, I couldn't help but find it all absurd. If my husband were to side with this melodramatic act of my mother-in-law, I thought at that moment we would live with just my son and me. That's what I thought. My husband was the first to break the silence. For now, let Maya and me have a conversation. Please go back to your room, Mom. My husband, who always took his mother's side, made this statement, leaving my mother-in-law wide-eyed. What are you saying? This is about Maya, so why don't you listen to me? Is that how it is? After all I've been through? This time, it involves Liam as well, so as parents, Maya and I want to have a proper conversation. My mother-in-law wore a consistently dissatisfied expression, but she probably couldn't say anything against her son, so she reluctantly agreed. After that, my husband and I talked for hours about this incident and past issues. We reached a certain conclusion, and a few days later we decided to convey the details to my mother-in-law. Mom, sorry for keeping you waiting. We finally sorted things out. My husband greeted my mother-in-law with a smile. Seeing that smile, my mother-in-law seemed convinced that my husband had taken her side, and happily began speaking. Is that so? Finally, you're getting away from Maya, right? Without paying any attention to my side of the story, my mother-in-law was delighted. She had called my brother-in-law's family over and started talking about me as usual, bad-mouthing me endlessly. Oh, it's really great. Today we'll finally be able to say goodbye to Maya. Right, Maya? In response to her question, I answered with a smile, of course. Good, then get out quickly. Take that not-so-cute child who looks just like you with you. From now on, this house will be for me, Andrew, and my other son's family. I'll be living there. Bye! Then my husband, who had been silent until then, suddenly opened his mouth. Shall we go, Maya? Huh? Yes, let's go, Andrew. Huh? Huh? It seemed my mother-in-law couldn't quite comprehend it, repeating, huh, several times. As my husband and I carried our belongings, we headed towards the front door with our family of three. At that moment, my mother-in-law called out to us. Wait, Andrew, what on earth is going on? We're going to live together in this house, right? What are you talking about? My husband turned back to my mother-in-law with a cold expression. I'm leaving with Maya. I can't tolerate your delusions any longer. My mother-in-law's body trembled and she slumped to the ground in disbelief. Why? Why are you taking her side? I heard everything from Liam's daycare teacher. How you took Liam away on your own, how you verbally abused the daycare staff, and how you bad-mouthed Maya at the daycare. Th that's... I never thought my mother could be such a terrible person. I misjudged her. Just surround yourself with people who actually listen to what you say and try to live a good life. With those words, my husband pushed me forward and left the house. My mother-in-law cried until the very end, calling my husband's name. On the way to our new home, my husband apologized to me. I'm sorry I didn't realize it sooner. Please, forgive me. What are you saying? Just by taking action like this, it's more than enough. 
I smile at my husband. Yes, I was more than happy that my husband believed my story this time and not my mother-in-law. Since then, we no longer have anything to do with my mother-in-law or my brother-in-law and his wife, and we've been able to regain a peaceful daily life. After that, that house was cancelled, so my mother-in-law had no place to live. She seems to have moved in with my brother-in-law's family. With my mother-in-law joining and putting a financial strain on them, they couldn't manage on just my brother-in-law's income. As a result, my sister-in-law had to start working, and now my mother-in-law is all alone at home. There's no one to badmouth anymore, and they don't even have someone to exchange harsh words with. In fact, even with Luna, whom she used to get along with so well, they now have constant arguments. It's because of you that I had to start working, isn't it? Spare me. Huh? Is it my fault? You're in the way, you old hag. Seeing Luna's true nature, it seems even my brother-in-law's feelings cooled off. Now they're in the middle of divorce proceedings. She used to be able to pretend in front of my brother-in-law because she had a lot of time on her hands, but now that she's working, she's getting frustrated more and more. It seems her true colors emerged. Whatever situation they find themselves in, I have no intention of ever having anything to do with my mother-in-law and the others. It's just my husband, my son, and me. We plan to work together to build a happy family from now on.